Hello and welcome to part four in our Juno video magnifier series. Today we're going to take a look at optical character recognition on the Juno. Not only how to perform it, but how to look at the different views and voices that are possible within the Juno, how to set up the defaults, and things like that. So let's begin. Performing OCR is pretty simple. You can capture a page to either read the page yourself or have Juno read it to you. Either way works. So the first thing you're going to need to do is close the stand on the Juno, and then you're gonna set the material that you want to capture on a flat surface, like a desk or a table, um, something like that. Then just make sure that you're in the live camera view and hold the device flat with the screen facing up. The camera will rotate down to face the document that you're trying to capture. You might wanna stand up so that you're looking down at the screen. Um, another one that people sometimes do is uh, is put their elbows down and put the device between their hands. But honestly, with a larger piece of paper, you probably will want to stand. Hold the Juno straight above the page, about eight inches away, maybe a little more. And if you can see it, frame the image of the page in the screen. And try to maximize the amount of content that's captured by moving around the device or turning the paper until the full page is shown on the screen. So that's going to take a little bit of practice. There's no like verbal prompting like you're at the edge of the screen or anything like that. You know, page part of the page is missing like that sometimes you get with an iOS device. None of that is, is available. So it's going to take some practice, especially if you have really low vision. Um, there are some tips on page 34 through 36 of the Juno user guide for successful text recognition and capturing. Just one that I don't know is there or not. Making sure that your paper is on a high contrast surface, for example, if, 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 if possible. If you have a white piece of paper that you're trying to, to do OCR on, try to see if you can have a darker brown or black background so that it pops a little bit more. You'll be able to see the edges of the page easier and line it up in the window a little bit smoother, smoother or easier than you would otherwise. Now, once you have it lined up okay in the window, you're going to want to press the red capture button and make sure that you hold the Juno steady and do not move it until you hear a click. Uh, a camera icon will be displayed until the capture is complete. Don't move that unit until after the capture is complete, because if you do, you'll end up with a blurry image, things like that, because you got to make sure that you give it enough time to focus and then take the picture. So it takes just a little longer than you might think it would. And because you're standing there still, you know, over a document, it feels like it's taking longer, but it's really not taking terribly long. Just make sure that you don't move the Juno until you hear the click. So if the buttons on the side of the screen aren't present, you're going to tap the restore button in that lower left hand corner to bring them into focus and bring them back. If they are there, there's no need to take any action at all. Um, you're going to tap the recognize text button, which is the middle button on the right side to scan the document. Now that the capture has been taken, the, the Juno needs to perform the OCR. And this is what performs that OCR. Otherwise, it's just a captured image. It's not going to pull the text from it. So pressing this recognize text button is extremely important. To listen to the text from the beginning, you can tap the play button, which is located in the lower middle portion of the screen. There's a uh, next slide that will display an image of the Juno that, are, that is going to describe the functions of the buttons available once the text has been recognized and gone through the OCR process. Now this screen is just a little bit crowded and I do apologize for that. There just was not a good color for the arrows. I didn't wanna do green. I just kept them red. Uh, but the text that is near each one of the menu option items is available to kind of help guide you. Starting um, at the top of the diagram in, in the 12 o'clock position, there, um, there's wording that says tap a word or zone to start reading from that point. So if you want to, you can tap just in a specific spot to read from that area. Or as mentioned before, there's that play button in the lower middle uh, part of the screen that you can press to start reading from the beginning. Moving to the right, if you want to um, discard the, the image in the file um, and return to live view, you can tap the close button. That's in the upper right hand corner. 
in the middle right hand side, you're going to have an option to toggle among the four viewing modes and tap the viewing mode icon. There's really three, there's sort of three and a half and you'll kind of get that idea later. Um, but we'll talk about those viewing modes in a, in a little bit. Um, in the lower right, to save the file, you're gonna tap the save button. And going to the lower left and coming back up, um, the lower left here is that restore button that we talked about earlier. If you need to hide the menus, if you want a little bit more room to uh, to read the text visually with less clutter or to follow the visual, um, the, the visual indicator, you can collapse those menus. In the middle left hand portion of the of the menus, you're going to be able to adjust the sound settings by tapping the volume and speaking rate icon. And um, that's pretty much works the same way that we've already talked about in a previous video, how to just adjust that. And the top right or top left, I'm sorry. And the final button on the top left is to open that main menu is the main menu button if you need to access the main menu at all. So there's an option available to set a default viewing mode. Um, the viewing mode screen provides toggle buttons that allow the user to set a default viewing and highlighting mode. So you can pick among the, the modes that you want and the highlighting mode as well. The screen displays a sample of the current default mode while the toggle button displays the next mode in the cycle. So when you are pressing that toggle button and going to the toggle button and it, especially if spoken menus are on, you'll hear the next mode in the cycle, not what the current mode is. So that's just an important point. We've kind of hit on this in other areas, but just a, a reminder. Your chosen view is set when you tap the previous button to get out of the, um, out of the setting um, to change the way Recognize text is displayed or highlighted. Here is what you would want to do. So tap the restore buttons um, in the bottom left hand corner where we looked at in the last um, in the last slide in the last area. So then you're going to tap your menu button, which is in the top left. You're going to within that main menu type the settings icon. And then from there, you're going to tap the reading settings icon and that will display the reading settings menu. From there, you'll tap the viewing modes icon to display the viewing modes screen, and you'll be able to navigate that from there. Now you're going to find yourself on the default viewing mode screen, and there is a screenshot of what that looks like on the right side of your screen here of what the Juno would look like um, in that menu. So you're going to press that it's, we're kind of call it the top right button, but really it's positioned more in the middle of that right side bar. But you're going to press that to toggle among these three options. And we're going to talk about which, which, you know, what each one of these looks like. The first option is snapshot or image mode. And what that does is it shows a full screen of text without any contrast, um, high contrast or anything like that. It's pretty much showing the image just as you took it. So any other um, maybe graphics that are in there are, are not going to be removed. And you'll, you'll see that's an example of what's on the, the sample on the right. That is in snapshot or image mode. The second option is teleprompter mode. And what that does is it shows text in a paragraph form using the high contrast coloring. When you perform the OCR, it like literally pulls that OCR text and puts it in a different environment so that you don't have any um, of the distractions. Maybe it'd be easier to read the text rather than having it pulled, you know, through all of that, um, all of that, uh, you know, flourishes and things like that that might distract. The last option is called ticker tape mode, and it shows only one line of text at a time using the same high contrast idea that, that we talked about in the teleprompter mode. And this is the most probably uncluttered view that you're going to see that pulls the OCR text out. Now, the other viewing mode that you can change is how the text is emphasized as it's read aloud. 
So uh, it, that would be the button in the lower right hand corner of the Juno. And the two options are boxed, which is what's shown on the Juno screenshot on the right, is that box around each word as it's read, or the other option is underline. So you can have a box or an underline to emphasize the text as it's being read aloud. Um, as an FYI, the uh, we talked about ticker tape mode recently, like in the last in the last slide. This is what ticker tape mode would look like in this example that's shown here. So as you can see, one line of text at a time. Um, that's what that looks like. And just a reminder that your viewing modes can be changed in each individual document if you prefer them different um, different than the default setup setup. For a lot of people, the default reading voice is extremely important. And reasons for that might uh, range from personal preference, a strong personal preference for a specific type of voice, to a need based on maybe a hearing loss or something like that. So Juno has multiple voices that a user can choose from when reading the document or reading any document, I suppose. So to get to that default reading voice area, you're going to tap the restore button display on, on the button bars, which is always in that lower left hand corner, and then tap your main menu again, which is always in the upper left. Then you're going to tap the settings icon to display the settings menu. Then you're going to tap the reading settings icon to display the reading settings menu, and then the reading mode icon. So once you've done all of that, you're going to need to tap the reading language icon um, if you need to. So this is where you would select the language that's being used for text recognition. You can only use the one at a time. So if you have English selected, you, and you um, are in Spanish class, you're going to need to go through all of the uh, all of these steps to reset it to Spanish or French or, or whatever language it might be. So you can only use one at a time. Once the language is selected, you can choose a voice. There are seven options for English, and you can see to the, the right here there is a, there is a screenshot of the Juno and what that selection would look like. Uh, by tapping on each voice, you'll play a sample, and when you're done, you're going to press the next button, and that will um, get you back into the previous screen. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, if you have enjoyed our series, please subscribe to our channel, like our video. Um, please place any comments you might have in the comments section. If you have any, um, any feedback, we would love to hear it. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.